Greetings, adventurers, and welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. So recently, we were able to go to Germany to conquest the largest LARP in the world. And that was all possible because of the relationship we formed with Bergsneider. They've been super cool to work with, and they wanted to send me a couple things just to check out and, like, make my own. Starting with this shield here. Now, because it has like a canvas material on it, I thought like, oh, this will be a nice relaxing episode. We'll just kind of, we're going to hang out and paint a little bit. Going to get my Bob Ross on, have a little fro, talk very quietly. And then the person that is me took over and it just is spiraled into a much bigger thing. <laughs> we're going to take like a base shield. We're going to customize it to be our own and make it something, make it sound pretty awesome. And make sure you stick around in the end because we have some winners from last week's giveaway. So without much further ado, let's jump right into it and level up. This skill. Oh, hey there. It is me from the past interrupting this. So I'm not gonna lie, I always hit a portion when I'm doing work like this where like I hit kind of a wall. It usually takes me a few minutes to realize what's happening. I am starving. Like I tunnel focus and by the time I come up for air, I'm like, oh, it's been it's been a long time since I've eaten. Luckily, thanks to today's sponsor, Magic Spoon, I have all the fuel I need to get me through this project. They were kind enough to send me their variety pack here, which has a frosted variety, peanut butter, cocoa, and fruity. I'm not gonna lie, this is kind of a big deal for me. Mostly because, and some of you may not know this, I, I'm allergic to wheat. But this stuff is gluten free. I can eat it and not want to die. That was that for an ad. You'll eat it, not want to die. Not only that, but it's really good for like low carb lifestyles or if you're into keto. My favorite out of the variety pack, by the way, is the, uh, the regular frosted one. Man, it's so good. I recommend buying the variety pack, and lucky for you, Magic Spoon has a deal for us. Just click on the link in the description, decide on what you want, and then use the promo code SKILLTREE for $5 off. Or just go to like magicspoon.com backslash SKILLTREE. I think that works too. So again, click the link or scan the little QR code down here, and use the code SKILLTREE for $5 off. Alright, go back to future me now, I gotta build a thing. I had to run and eat a drink. For some reason, my workshop is so hot today. Anyways, it all started with this base shield here. It's made out of a super sturdy, kind of rigid foam and covered with this canvas material, which is really cool because it takes paint like a canvas, right? In fact, here's the example they give in their video on how to put this thing together. And look at how cool that is. Like, oh, there's so much you can do with this thing. That said, there seemed to have been a mix up and the actual like straps, because you can put the, the, the straps kind of custom wherever you want them. The straps didn't show up, which is fine because I have like leather for days laying around. I'll just make my own. But first I had to figure out which way I wanted to orient it, right? Like did I want the shield to be like this way or did I want to hold it this way? Ultimately, I decided with this kind of up and down position just because it gives me the ability to punch with my shield, which I like. I like being able to punch with my shield, turns out. Now for my straps, I just cut some of these half inch strips out of some two ounce leather. Just as a heads up, what it usually comes with is more of like a like a flat ribbon material almost, so that once you wrap it around, it lays down perfectly flat. With the leather, like what you're gonna see me do here, it ends up with a little bit of a bump. Doesn't bother me because of what I do with it, but just as a heads up. Anyways, to attach this, I first lay my arm in place where it'll go. Then I use my pencil to mark on either side of my fist and my forearm where the straps will have to go through. Then I take an X-Acto blade and make a slit along those marks that I made just long enough for the leather to go through. Basically what we're trying to do is send that leather from the inside of the shield to the outside, loop it around, and then back in. That'll give us a really firm hold spread out across the whole front of the shield. To get my hole perfectly on the other side, I just busted out this sharp chisel I had that was about the same size as my leather. I just positioned that into that slit I made and then slammed the thing through. Not graceful, but damn is it effective. Sometimes you just, you just gotta punch a tool, you know what I mean? With that hole cut, it was an easy job to just send my leather straps through them leaving me with the two ends on the inside of the shield. And again, the strap going across the face of the shield to spread out that load. I, of course, just followed suit, doing the same thing with the upper straps as well. Then just felt it out to make sure it works. Okay, so once I was sure that worked, I actually wanted to paint the back and the sides of it a flat black. The final plan is gonna be to wrap the front and the sides in some foam so I can decorate it. By painting the back black and the sides as well, it just makes it so that there's no like white flashing through from the canvas underneath. It gives me just kind of a basic finish on that back. But before painting it, I just had to remove my leather straps. Now for my paint, I'm using this Liquitex black gesso. 
It just does a really good job covering and fills in a lot of that grain of the canvas. And while that black paint dried, I went ahead and dyed my leather straps a dark brown. And look at how good that looks, just that black back to the thing. I don't know, I just think it looks really clean and also makes it so I have to do less for the back. I'm gonna be doing a lot to the front there. And I just didn't wanna like bulk it up too much. You're gonna see what I mean soon. So with that painted up, I just set my straps back to where they belong. From here, I'll admit that I was a little bit worried that while I was holding it, maybe like the pressure from me like punching with the thing or, or holding it is gonna start to break the canvas up a little bit, especially because I have a rigid leather and I think it's originally meant to be like more of a ribbon material. So in order to kind of reinforce where the leather goes through in the back, I just cut these little squares that I nipped the corner from just to make them decorative and then cut a slit just big enough for my leather to go through the middle. These I just slid into place over those straps and then traced around them with a pencil. This is gonna give me a clear marking on where to put my contact adhesive. With that all figured out, I just hit these with some brown dye too, then painted on the contact adhesive in the space that I marked out as well as to the back of the leather. About 10 minutes later, it was tacky and ready to stick into place. And this is a super small detail, but I honestly, I think that looks kind of cool. Just from the back, it has more of like a professional look, like that needs to be reinforced somehow because it does, it does need to be reinforced, but still, I think it looks cool. Okay, now really time to get into the meat of this thing. I've never like wrapped anything in foam, but I know how foam reacts when you're trying to like carve designs into it and stuff, and I really wanted to get that in here. So at the risk of just ruining the whole thing, I decided to give it a go. The foam I'm using is this two millimeter EVA foam. I just cut a sheet in half and then lined up one edge with the very center of the board. So the vision here is to make the shield look like it's made out of wooden planks. So having that line down the middle doesn't bother me at all. In fact, it's gonna make it look more realistic. I'm gonna make sure I put my glue exactly where I needed it. I just flipped the whole thing over and roughly drew around the shape of the shield. Then I used the paintbrush and covered the entire face of the shield with my contact adhesive. Once that was well covered, I went ahead and filled that space I had drawn out with the contact adhesive as well. And I noticed something interesting. So when you add that much contact adhesive to foam, it just, it just kind of folds up on itself. It was a real pain to mess with. But then as it dries, it just kind of lays itself back flat again. So now you know that. Do with it what you will. And once the adhesive was tacky, I just carefully lined it up with the middle of my shield and then pressed down everywhere to make sure I got all the air bubbles out. Then did the same thing on the opposite side, making sure I lined them up as closely as I could. After smoothing it out and making sure there's good contact and adhesion all over the shield, I just went back in with a razor knife and cut out all of the excess foam. Now you'll see in that last clip, I was wearing a respirator. Whenever you're using contact adhesive, one, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. I've got like vents and stuff that you can't see in, on camera here. And two, make sure you're wearing a mask because that stuff is gnarly to breathe in. You don't want to be breathing that in. But look at how slick this little base of the shield looks. I kind of dig that smooth foam front. It looks way more kind of finished to me. Though you will notice there's little bumps where those leather straps are. I'm going to cover that up later on for the most part so it doesn't bother me. But again, something to think about if you're doing this yourself. All right, so now it's time for the fun part. Let's make this thing look like wood. So my vision is that it's made out of like four planks of wood that have been connected together. So to kind of rough out where I wanted those to go, I just used my nail to draw lines right down the foam. This way, if I didn't like it, I could just heat the foam a little bit and that mark will just disappear. Since I did like it, I went back in with my razor knife and scored right down those lines. The goal here isn't to go all the way through to the canvas underneath, though these lines in particular, I did go pretty deep. Because again, I don't mind them separating more than everything else because it's supposed to look like boards. Think of it like three quarters of the way through the foam. Okay, so now if you look at wood, you look at the grain pattern, how it's kind of, you know, swervy and all over the place. I just went ahead and mocked that pattern with the very tip of my razor knife. We're just scoring the surface, cutting like a quarter of the way through, making random natural wavy lines. This little more rounded area here to make it look like a knot was in the wood and just smaller quick lines in between things to help fill in those spaces. It's really hard to do this wrong. You just kind of go with whatever feels good. And honestly, it's a natural substance you're trying to copy. Nothing's perfect in nature. You can just kind of have fun with this. And look at how cool that looks. Like by just kind of swerving my knife randomly, I made a pretty good facsimile of a grain. But it gets so much better because if you hit it with a heat gun, all of those marks open up just a little bit more and add a whole bunch more depth and detail to the piece. 
Like, look at this part where I didn't hit it with the heat gun, and this part where I did. It also really smooths out the foam, too, and gives it a cool, shiny look. So I just happily went ahead and did this with the entire shield. All right, so the vision for this shield is, yes, made out of wood, but also to have, like, our insignia, our logo on the front. Which, by the way, fun news. We have rebranded a bit. It's going to stay skill tree, but we're going to be using this logo now. Look at how pretty it is. Ah, I love it. We'll go ahead and share that image if you guys want, so you can put it on some other stuff, whatever you like. But yeah, if you see the little logo in YouTube change or whatever, it's still us, I promise you. <laughs> now to put our fancy new logo on the shield, I actually just had my Cricut cutter cut it out of some foam. But you know, it's foam. You can make whatever you want and then just cut it out with an X-Acto blade. This just saved me a bunch of time. The thought here is to mount it on a little shield kind of shape to make it almost look like a metal boss of some sort. Not really a boss, a boss is like rounded and where your hand goes, but I don't know what else to call it. So a metal boss. To put them together, I just did the same trick where I traced around the tree with a pencil, filled in that space with some contact adhesive, and then stuck the two pieces together. And I'm sorry, that looks dope. It's the little things like that in the project to me. As soon as I stuck it on, I was like, ooh, that looks good though. <laughs> Now, I didn't show it, but I also mounted that shield shape to a slightly larger shield shape just to give me a little bit more depth. Then I put the whole thing onto the shield and traced around it so I could use the same trick to glue them together. And bam, look at how cool that looks. Like it's only partway finished, but if I was to get that and they're like, here, here's a shield for you to finish however you like, I'd be like, that is a really cool looking shield. Now, part of the master plan is to make it look like the shield had like a metal rim all around the edges. So I just cut a couple of strips of that foam, the same width as the thickness of the shield, and then carefully glued it in place all along the outside. I also wanted to make it look like it was riveted into place, and I learned a really cool trick. If you just take something kind of circular, like this is the, the very head that comes off of a paintbrush is what I use, but I've seen people use like the back of a pen where they've removed the little cap that's there, and all you do is you push it, you push it hard into the foam and it leaves these little circular marks that look just like something's been riveted or nailed into place. It's a tiny little detail, but it looks so good. In fact, I even added it to the front to make it look like that little kind of shield that the tree is on was also nailed into place. Now this thing looks cool, but at this point it's still like just a basic foam shield. Now we're gonna try to paint it and make it look, make it look a little bit more realistic. For starters, I'm using this Plasti Dip Spray because it forms a really nice flexible base and does a great job filling in kind of any imperfections that I don't like. Now, a part of our rebrand was coming up with some colors that would be like our colors. These ones, as a matter of fact. So I wanted the shield itself to be as close to like our blue as I could make it, with the tree being gold in the middle to be like our yellow color. To try to make my blue, I just went ahead and mixed up some blue and green, a little bit of brown is in there, just to get it kind of as close as I could. Though just a little bit lighter, because at the end I'm gonna add a black wash to this and it's gonna darken everything a little bit. Then I painted it on everywhere there would be wood. And this looked really good. It's hard to pick up the detail right there, but while I was painting it on, it, it genuinely felt like I was painting wood. Like I'm painting it and I'm seeing the grain and I'm trying to go in line with the grain. And in fact, if you use kind of a rougher paintbrush like I did, those paintbrush marks make it look even more like there's real grain there. It was just kind of cool. I don't know, I thought it was neat. Now the rest of the shield, I wanted to make look like metal. So I first busted out this metallic FX paint and painted the shield that the tree was sitting on. I also used that paint to paint all around the edge of the shield. Then I used some gold FX paint to paint the tree itself and the outside border of the shield it's mounted on. I also painted in the little rivets just for extra detail. All right, so once that dried, I just needed to add a black wash to add more detail. This stuff's dead easy to make. I just added a little bit of black paint to a spray bottle, a whole bunch of water, and a couple of drops of dish soap. You want something like a dish soap because it breaks the surface tension of the water, allowing it to get into all the little cracks and crevices. Once that was all set, I just completely covered this shield in my black wash. It's always stressful to do because it looks like it's too much, but as you dab it off, you can see that all the little cracks and everything stand out way more because that paint made its way down into them. It has a crazy amount of detail and depth that just generally looks really good. Like, look at how slick this grain pattern looks now. Oh my god, I love it so much. It looks like real planks put together now, and even the metal pieces have way more depth because of that color variation. As one last little, well, little coup de grace for this thing, I just busted out my airbrush and added kind of a vignette all around the outside and around that shield to kind of make it pop a little bit more. 
And oh my god, look at how slick this thing is. It looks so dope. Like, look at it. Oh, I love it so much. And it was really easy to do. I was worried at first about wrapping it in foam and stuff, but actually, it was no problem at all. And the foam made it so I could make this nice texture. I just, I love it. Oh, I made some handles too for the back. It was super easy. Basically, all I did was take this little hunk of leather with the ends trimmed just thin enough to be able to fit this D-ring into it. Then I used a rivet to lock that D-ring into place. I did the same thing on the other end, making sure it was just wide enough to fit my fist in it. Now to bulk that up more, I just took another square of leather and wrapped it around to make a beefier handle. Then used my sewing machine through all of it to lock it into place. It's super rough and rudimentary, but once it's dyed, it actually has a really cool look to it. I genuinely like that rougher kind of looking thing, especially with handles like that. I don't know why. It just already has a feeling like it's been well used. I don't know, I think it looks cool. Anyways, I was able to use those leftover straps from the piece that went through the shield, cut off the excess, bend them over that D-ring and lock them in place with some rivets. Now I have this badass nifty little handle to hold on to. To finish it off, I just punched a bunch of holes in one of those bottom straps and added a buckle onto the other one. This gave me a nifty little adjustable belt that helps lock it securely into place on my arm and makes it so that no matter how thick the armor is I'm wearing, I can still use my shield. And this holds nice and strong, gives me really good control over the shield, and I love it. Oh my god, I love it so much. Now there's two more things I could have done with it. One is I could take like a dry brush with white and add, add a little bit to it. I think that will add a little bit more of a um, depth to the whole piece, kind of making those highlights stick out a little bit more high, which I might do. The other thing is this needs a top coat. It needs to be covered up because if it like rains like it did when I was in Conquest, all of this, this paint is gonna reactivate and drip. Now you can use a regular spray sealer, but I'm actually waiting to get this stuff. It's called Through the Roof. It's apparently a clear, flexible product that's made to like patch holes in your roof. But a lot of people who do like cosplay, LARPing, foam work, like it because it seals well and it's flexible so it won't crack over time. I'll let you know in a later episode how that goes. But look at that. Ah, oh, it's so cool. I love it so much. Okay, so last week I decided to do two giveaways. One, I said a whole bunch of people were going to win some of these little belt favors here so that you could identify each other out in the world if you go to LARPs or anything. I believe I said 10 people and I'm not gonna read off all 10 names, I'll probably butcher them. So you should be seeing them right here. Congratulations, you 10. Do reach out to me via this email here to let me know where you want me to send them. The second thing I'm giving away is a nifty bullwhip that friend of the channel, Elicard808, made for me. Well, he didn't make the one I'm giving away for me. He made that for you. I'm keeping one. <laughs> and the winner of this nifty thing is Kim Alley. Kim Alley, congratulations. I will send this to you again. Just go in the description and send it to my email. Also, because I'm sure this I'm sure this is considered a weapon, I may have to ask if you are A, an adult, or B, you have adult permission to get said whip. I didn't, I didn't really think that one through. Anyways, make sure you reach out to me and you'll be, you know, whip whipping things. <laughs> It really is cool. They crack really well. Oh, one more special thanks to Magic Spoon for sponsoring. Like, I I've been eating this for a long time. I genuinely do like it. So yeah, you use the code thingy because they're real good. Okay, that is it for me. Just a reminder that next week we aren't going to have an episode because your boy's traveling and I'm, I'm going to need to rest a little bit. Now, if you like this project half as much as I did, why don't you give me some of that like it love and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. In the meantime, though, keep leveling up, you. You made it to the end screen. YouTube loves it when you do that. It's a fantastic way to support this channel. Another fantastic way to support this channel is by joining these people's noble ranks. These are our Patreon skill monkeys and we couldn't do it without them. A special thanks to our newest high tier level Patreon members, Richard Moore, Sean Kateas, and Teresa Cates. It means just everything to us that you guys want to support this channel and it's an amazing help for us to actually get the materials we need to do this stuff. If you like what we do here and want to support us, consider joining our Patreon, link in the description below. Or you can click on one of these videos that YouTube thinks you'd like, and that'll work too. I'll just sit here and stare ominously at you until you pick which one.